Welcome back to my lecture on behind the scenes of the SPICE circuit simulator. And now we're going over into part four, which is AC analysis. It's very brief. And then part five, transient analysis. Let's start really with a brief overview of AC analysis because it's not my expertise, but you can read more about it in uh, Kenneth Kundert's book or in other books as well. So how is uh, AC analysis going to work? Well, AC analysis needs a bias point, and that's equivalent to a DC operating point. And therefore, as I said at the beginning of the lecture, in motivation for DC operating points is that we're going to need a DC operating point basically for every analysis in SPICE, and that is true for AC analysis. So we're going to find a, via, a bias point by the DC op convergence. There can be differences in the DC op point found uh, because of phase shifts and so it usually happens due to setting a DC voltage on sources and to eliminate this one thing that you should do is not set the DC voltage to zero on VPULS and VAC sources. So just let's go over a, a, an example of a um, type of a, a, a modified nodal analysis on a, a AC um, and what we have here is a similar circuit to what we had before, but um, now instead of just having uh, uh, resistors, what we're going to have is a capacitor, and I added a diode that we're going to linearize and so forth just for um, uh, showing you how it's done. So we again have two voltages here, node 1 and node 2, which gives us two voltages in our, uh, in our uh, vector of variables and two uh, places in our I source vector. Okay, so um, this is very equivalent to the DC matrix, just that caps and inductors are now not removed, but they're added as admittances. So um, for a capacitor, the admittance is going to be J omega C, and the inductor's admittance is going to be 1 over J omega L. Okay, and uh, so what we're going to have here is just look at R1, at uh, node 1, and it's connected to R1, R2, and C1, so we get G1, G2, and J omega C1 at the first diagonal. At the second diagonal, we're going to have R2 and C1, so we're going to have G2 and um, uh, J omega C2, but it's also connected to the uh, diode over here, so we're going to take the guess of what the admittance of the diode is, which is going to be G2. D. So we're going to have over here GD plus G2 plus J omega C1. And then between nodes 1 and 2, we're going to have R2 and J omega C1, which we're going to put over here. Now, for the voltages over here, uh, the, the, uh, for the uh, I source vector, the only current that's going into node 1 is I0. So that's going to be up here. But interesting enough, what we have for the diode is, is that it also has a current. So remember, it was uh, G times VD plus I uh, equivalent. So the I equivalent, which is going to be going this way through the, the forward bias diode, is going to be the solution, the second solution to the I source vector. And then we're going to continue with our, um, uh, you know, finding our, uh, uh, our convergence where we know omega because it's going to be for a certain, um, for a certain, uh, analysis point. Okay, so uh, that is uh, how we do AC, uh, that's how we do AC analysis. So that was really short again, and now we're going to go directly into transient analysis. So transient analysis generates a system of nonlinear ordinary differential equations. There is no known direct method to solve these equations. Okay, instead of, uh, instead of that, we're going to discretize time using the Euler form formation. dq of ti to dt is going to be equal to qti minus qti minus 1 divided by ti minus ti minus 1. It converts the problem into a system of nonlinear algebraic, uh, algebraic equations. And in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to first solve a DC operating point. That's the initial transient solution. And then we're going to take the caps and inductors. We're going to add their current voltages that are linearized according to their integral values. And we're going to linearize nonlinear elements. And then we're going to use newton raphson method to find the DC op for each time set, uh, step throughout the transient. So let's see how this is done. Time steps are a very important point to trade off accuracy versus runtime. So a time step is the point where we actually go and do convergence again. So after each time step, the simulator will decide when the next time step is, and that's a really important point. It's just the decision of where the next time step should be. It's going to predict the value at the next time step for, for, for the guess, and it's going to calculate the DC op at the next time step using the Newton-Raphson method. Okay, 
So we make this prediction and we actually calculated what the convergence is. And then we take the error between the prediction and the calculation and um, compare it against what we call the LTE, the local truncation error. And if we see that we didn't predict well, that means that we should have probably used a closer time step because there was a huge change between two time steps and we want to cover it. And therefore, we throw away that solution and we choose a sooner time step and again, um, do the same type of a thing. We converge at the new prediction and see what the local truncation error is. If it's still yet too big, then we're gonna take an even closer time step. So we're gonna have a lot of time steps uh, um, over where we have large changes. And in fact, finally, there's something called the max step parameter, and that's gonna set the uh, maximum allowed size of a time step so we don't take too big of steps, even though we just have something that may not seem to have been changing at all. Breakpoints are set where pre-known discontinuity, discontinuities are simulated. So instead of just going and really deciding or guessing where a time step should be, we know that when we have a V-pulse, when it makes a change from 0 to 1 or something like that, there's probably going to be a, uh, a lot of action going on in our, in our circuit. So right around where <coughs> the, um, the uh, discontinuity is, where we you know, make this step or something, we're going to put a lot of breakpoints, which are going to automatically be time steps. Um, so it, it eases our decision and it eases our convergence. Okay, uh, so calculations around breakpoints are handled separately to ensure convergence. What is this local truncation error that I, um, that I mentioned before? So it's the error between the calculated and the predicted values at the next time step. Okay, so basically we had, you know, a VTK minus 1, minus 2, minus, uh, sorry, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. And this was our current prediction because we took this and we should have gotten over to here. But when we solved it, we found out that VTK is over here. So we have an error between our calculated point our calculated solution and our predicted solution and that error is the LT and if it's too big what we're going to do is we're going to you know make our guess over here and then we'll find out that we should have been here and then we saw our prediction should have started curving something like that okay if the LT is smaller than the convergence criteria the time step is kept otherwise a closer time step is chosen and this is the convergence criteria and it's surprisingly very similar uh, maybe not surprisingly to the convergence criteria that we saw for DC op type of uh, solutions so the local uh, truncation error is VTK minus VTK predicted this is the uh, calculated value at the current node and the predicted value these arrows should be moved over a little and that should be smaller than what we call the LTE ratio times um, what our kind of type of uh, convergence criteria was uh, for um, DC op rel tall times the maximum voltage on the whole uh, circuit plus the absolute some sort of absolute value. So rel tall is the relative tolerance and VTK max is the maximum voltage also known as the rel ref parameter. Well, rel ref sets the, the maximum voltage. And what is this maximum voltage? It, it can be several things. It can be point local, which means it's the largest value at this node during this iteration. It can be local, the largest value at this node so far, or global, the largest value at any node so far. So um, uh, that's the rel ref parameter. And we have the absolute tolerance and we have a normalization factor, which is called LT ratio. So we really have, uh, um, the ability to, um, you know, kind of work on these things to get better accuracy and so forth. But um, generally, as I mentioned before, we're not going to usually play uh, with these things by ourselves because they're set to pretty good values by this uh, point in, uh, in time uh, with uh, these tools being run for several decades now. Okay, we will see how we can actually play around with them to get better accuracy. So there is a, a point called the integration method. So caps and inductors present an integral relationship. So L times I equals the integral of V dt and C times V equals the integral of I dt. And we can play around with how the integration is done using what is known as the method parameter. So um, the first order gear or Euler type of uh, method is only good around discontinuities and it's basically what we kind of maybe had learned in an early algebra course where to integrate um, what's going on around this uh, curve we use uh, you know just uh, these types of rectangles so d to dx of v t k plus one is one over h times v to dk plus one minus v to t k 
So that's only good around discontinuities, um, a kind of more, uh, more accurate way is using what we call trapezoidal. So here we're going to, instead of using rectangles, we're going to use trapezoids, and that's um, just adding this kind of a, a, a slant into here. Um, a gear two or a second order gear is a bit better curve fitting by uh, using some sort of a, uh, you know, a kind of more polynomial type of a thing. And uh, it's better at curve fitting, but it can actually damp oscillations. So we might not want to use it in some points of analog simulations. If you do have fake uh, simulations, it's due to using trapezoidal integration and you want to um, try to stay away from that. So these are fake oscillations that you see in trapezoidal integration. And these are um, getting rid of them when we went to gear two integration. So air preset is one of the uh, uh, important parameters for transient analysis, and um, uh, it, it helps us uh, kind of trade off between accuracy and, uh, and, and maybe speed, and also can help us uh, kind of play if we get those types of strange oscillations and try something else. So this is actually when we look into our analysis, uh, our transient analysis form on, um, on ADE, we have this accuracy default, which are conservative, moderate, and liberal. And if you ever paid attention, it also says that this is the air preset type of parameter. And we have options that are liberal, moderate, and conservative, and they really are trading off our accuracy versus our um, speed. Uh, so it, what air preset does, it, it gives a preset for these parameters, max step, rel tall, LT ratio, rel rough, and method. For the maximum time step, it, the conservative has a much smaller maximum time step than liberal or moderate. For the uh, relative tolerance, uh, the conservative has a smaller relative tolerance than liberal and moderate. That really can trade off the speed over here versus accuracy. LT normalization, um, you know, it gets smaller for liberal and moderate, uh, moderate versus conservative. Um, rel ref is the maximum voltage if it's going to be global or local um, as we uh, kind of read about before and the integration method if it's using gear 2 or trapezoidal or um, or others okay so uh, uh, here too in transient conditions we have convergence aids and the important convergence aid is of course the initial condition so initial conditions are kind of the same as node sets they put a some sort of a voltage uh, or a current actually on a certain um, on a certain place in our solution but the difference the big big difference is that they're not removed after the first DC op iteration so an initial condition is actually to go and to set a value a node set is used to assist in convergence remember with the node set we um, placed a voltage on a certain node uh, for the first guess and then we removed it as we iterated through the convergence process. Initial condition is different. It's saying, listen, really at time zero, you have this voltage on this node or this current through this device. So it's to set a value to node at the beginning of the transient and it is not removed uh, um, thereafter. It's just the first, you know, it's not removed for our convergence. It's the real value that should be there. Uh, it's an input to our circuit, okay? Um, DC op and DC sweep analyzes ignore initial conditions because they're looking at DC, at DC conditions, not an initial condition of a transient analysis. So basically, a, um, a transient analysis um, does not, it disregards node sets and an initial condition, and a DC analysis disregards an initial condition. Um, we IC to, to set them in the test, so we can put a dot IC on a volt, on any node, um, with the, in the inside the test, or we can actually put a, a, a voltage on a capacitor as an initial condition or on an inductor as a, uh, a, an initial current, okay? And so how do we do that? So uh, the way to do it in the test it, other than writing dot IC in our in our you know in our textual netlist uh, um, description, we can um, open up uh, right click and go to convergence aids initial condition or from the AD test editor we can hit simulation convergence aids initial condition. So those are the two ways to do it in AD from the UI. Or you can also go and just open the properties of a capacitor or of a an inductor. And since we're usually talking about capacitors in the in what I do in digital circuit world, then I'm just showing you on capacitors, we have initial condition, which will put an initial voltage across the capacitor. Um, so that's like a VC at zero. So those are the two ways of doing it. And you can use, um, uh, you can use parameters for this type of thing and run parametric sweeps and so forth, um, similar to the node sets as well. 
So for um, transient analysis uh, as opposed or complementary to how we can save the DC operating points for, for DC analysis to make things faster and so forth, for transient analysis, we can save time points. So we can save the, um, the solutions for a, uh, uh, at a certain time point and then use them as an initial condition for a next run. So for example, if we were um, running a long, long initial, uh, long, long transient analysis, and then we want to do make some sort of a change or an, or analyze something differently, um, starting from some point and on. We can just save the uh, save the the uh, convergence at a certain time step, and then reload it later on to be used as initial condition. So write, which is the default one, it writes the uh, um, it writes the initial condition of the current simulation. So basically, that's similar to the DC operating point at the beginning. But remember, it's initial condition for a uh, for a uh, transient analysis. And write final is the final state of the simulation. So it's when we finish our simulation, what the uh, what the operating point is, or uh, the convergence point, or the, the the voltages and currents of the entire um, circuit at that point of the transient analysis at that discretized time point. So read IC is used to read uh, the initial conditions. So again, if we spit out the, um, the, 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 the initial condition at a certain time point, we can read it in and basically start our circuit from that time point. So we have it here under transient analysis options. We can do write or write final. And we have a, a whole array of other ones, save clock, save period, save time, save file, recover, info times, and AC times, which help us you know, give different types of points along there that we can save and so forth and give uh, file, different file names and so forth. Um, uh, so that's basically what you can do. Um, you can also give times in AC times to say, okay, I want to run my transient analysis this amount of time, and at that point run my AC simulation. You can do that with AC time. So that's a kind of a cool option to do. So that was all I had to talk about AC analysis and transient analysis. And for the final part of our lecture, we'll be discussing some other things about simulation and particularly in the cadence uh, kind of ADE simulation environment.